so we are on the top of page three now and we've been talking about the fact that if a function is in the form f of x equals mx plus b then it's a line and in fact that form has a specific name it's called the slope intercept form so the slope intercept form of a line is f of x equals mx plus b there's different forms of a line and this is just one of them um, so the constant m we already kind of mentioned that that represents the slope of the line and then the constant b indicates that the y-intercept of the line is going to be the point 0 comma b because if you plug 0 in for x you just get b left um, so let's use this information to do these examples find the slope and the y-intercept of the lines with the following equations so this one is really straightforward because it's already in that form um, f of x equals mx plus b so we just have to identify m and b well m is the coefficient that's multiplied to the x so m is negative 0.17 so there's our slope and then next it says find the y-intercept well that deals with what b is so since b is negative 41 that tells us that the y-intercept is the point 0 comma b so 0 comma negative 41 is the y-intercept a point on the graph and now this one is going to be a little bit more work because it's not exactly in that form right now so to make it in this form we need to get y by itself so solve for y so let's start with the original equation 3x minus 6y minus 7 equals 0. Well, if I'm trying to get this y by itself, let's move the other parts away from it. So let's subtract 3x from both sides to get rid of this. And then this says minus 7, so I'm going to add 7 to both sides to get rid of that. And I'm going to do both of those things at the same time. So I'm just left with the negative 6y on the left. And then on the right side, it's 0 minus a 3x, and then plus a 7. And then I just need to get rid of this negative 6. Well, this is negative 6 times y. So to get rid of it, I need to divide by negative 6. And whatever I do to this side, I need to do to this entire side. So I have y equals negative 3x plus 7 all over negative 6. But if I want it to look like mx plus b, then I need to split this up. So I can do negative 3 over negative 6. Well, negative 3 over negative 6 reduces to 1 half. So I have 1 half x. And then for the plus 7, I have plus 7 over negative 6. So positive over a negative is a negative 7 over 6. So now we've solved for y. Now we can tell what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. So m is the coefficient in front of x. So m is a half. That's our slope. And the y-intercept deals with b. So what's b? b is negative 7 over 6. So that tells us that the y-intercept is the point 0 comma negative 7 over 6. So this one, it took a little bit more work 
to get the slope and the y-intercept because we had to isolate y first so that it was in the form mx plus b so that we could get what m and b are. All right, now let's graph. So we're gonna do this graph differently than how we did the one on the bottom of page two. From here on out, we don't need to plot points like this anymore. So this was kind of the old way to graph a line. Plot points. We are going to use the fact that we know how to find the slope now and we know how to find the y-intercept. So for this one, we notice that it is in the form y equals mx plus b. So let's write down what m is. So the slope is the coefficient minus two over three. And then b is this number here, four. So that tells us that the y-intercept is the point 0 comma 4. So we're going to use this information and this information to graph the line. So put your axes in x, y. Put my scale in. So 0 comma 4 is right here. Once you have that plotted then use the slope to find more points. So the slope is saying go down 2 because there's a minus 2 on top and then go right 3 because there's a positive 3 in the denominator. So from this point here I'm going to go down 2 and right 3. Down 2 and right 3. And you could also kind of go reverse so instead of down two and right three, you could also go left three and up two to find more points. And then draw your line in. Like that. And since we're going to be graphing two different lines on this coordinate plane, I'm gonna label this one f of x. Okay, now let's go down and graph this one. We're going to identify the same components. We're going to identify what is m and what is b. Well, m is the coefficient in front of x, so m is 4. And then b is the value that's being added on at the end, the constant. But there's nothing being added on, so we can say b is 0. So that tells us that the y-intercept is the point 0, 0. So again, we're going to use this information and this information. So we're going to start here at 0, 0. So plot that. And then we're going to use the slope to find more points. And then this one might be easier if you write it as a fraction, 4 over 1, because then it's more clear that we want to go for the 4. We want to go up 4. And then the 1, we want to go right 1, since it's positive. So from this point, we want to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and right 1, which is here. I could also do the reverse. So instead of going up 4 and right 1, we could go left 1 and down 4. And then draw the line in and I'm going to label this one G of X so you got to tell the reader which one you're graphing if you're graphing more than one at the same time so let's move on to page four so the two examples on this page 
are applications of linear functions. So they're ways that we can use linear functions to help us find information about real world scenarios. So first, the number of people participating in the Federal Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program has increased from 17.2 million in the year 2000 to 47.6 million in the year 2013. And then the following graph illustrates that increasing trend. Find the average rate of change in the number of people using food stamps from 2000 to 2013. So first we have to figure out, well, what is it truly asking for? Well, it's right here, average rate of change. But if you look at the very first page of the notes, we said that the slope represents the rate of change. So we're looking for slope here. And we have the graph for us. And this graph, you can see, is not perfectly linear. It's not a perfect line. However, we are just going to find the average rate of change from this year, from 2000, up to this year, 2013. So all we're going to be concerned with are those two points. And if we found the slope between the two points, that will answer the question of what is the average rate of change of the number of people using food stamps from 2000 to 2013. And since we're finding slope, we can use the slope formula when we have two points, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And our two points are this one, which is 2000 comma 17.2, and this point, which is 2013 comma 47.6. So this can be our x1, y1, and this can be our x2, y2. So let's subtract the y's on top. So we have 47.6 minus 17.2 over, subtract the x's, 2013 minus 2000. And then reduce. If you subtract uh, 47.6 minus 17.2, you're going to get 30.4 over 2013 minus 2000 is 13. And that's our slope. Um, you could leave it like this if this were in class. So this is your in class answer. We don't really need to go further, but um, if you did divide the top by the bottom, you'd get approximately 2.3. So maybe on the homework, they would want a decimal like that. So what this is saying is the top number dealt with the Y values, and the Y values were the number of participants right here. So we have on top number of participants And then the bottom has to deal with the years. So this is number of participants per year. So from 2000 to 2013, the average rate of change was an increase of about 2.3 million participants per year. 
and it was an increase because the number is positive. And we know it was 2.3 million participants because it gave us the numbers in millions here. Number of participants in millions or 17.2 million to 47.6 million. Let's do one last example. There is no proven way to predict a child's adult height, but we can estimate it using a linear function. The adult height, m, in inches of a male child whose parents' total height is x in inches can be estimated with the function m of x equals 0.5x plus 25. So this formula can predict the height of a male child if you know their parents' total height. And then we have a different formula for females, so the adult height f in inches of a female child whose parents' total height is x in inches can be estimated with the function f of x equals 0.5x minus 2.5. I made a mistake here. This should actually be plus 2.5. So make sure you fix that as well. m of x equals 0.5x plus 2.5. All right, so the question is, we need to estimate the height of a female child whose parents' total height is 135 inches. So first of all, since we want to estimate the height of a female child, we need to use the f of x formula. And then the parents' total height is 135, so that's for the variable x. So all this is asking us to do, really, is plug in 135 for x. So we're finding f of 135. So this equals 0.5. So that means replace this x with 135 minus 2.5. And then we just find out what this value is going to be. Well, half of 135 is 67.5 minus 2.5, so that's going to give us 65. So approximately 65 inches tall. So this is saying if there was a female child and you add up her parents' height in inches, and it turns out to be 135, then that child's predicted height as an adult is going to be 65 inches tall. All right, so that concludes the section 1.3 note outline.